Good evening. My name is Tom Murphy. I'm here tonight to uh, try and revive a program that I had years ago uh, to uh, inform people about issues in the village of Mamaroneck. You know, basically, you know, what's going on, what could be of concern, and what's on the horizon in the future in the village of Mamaroneck and the town of Mamaroneck. Um, the show is uh, presently titled The Tom Murphy Show, but we're going to be changing that. That's just tentative, uh, but we'll talk more about that later. Tonight I have on as a guest a special friend of mine who I've known for a number of years and worked with in the village for a number of years. He's been active in the village his, the whole time he's lived here. He's served on every land use board that the village of Mamaroneck has, and we are lucky to have him tonight. My guest is Clark Nuringer. Hi, Tom. Hey, Clark. How you doing, buddy? Good. Uh, Clark. There's a lot of different, there's always land use issues percolating in the village of Mamaroneck, but right now one of the, uh, the largest, uh, the largest undeveloped or unbuilt piece of land in the village of Mamaroneck is the Hampshire Country Club. <coughs> and uh, there, there's a proposed development plan for Hampshire that I think a lot of people uh, haven't been informed about yet and, you know, not making a decision one way or the other just an attempt to inform people about what's going on. Could you, could you give us an outline of what the owner or developer is planning or proposing to do in Hampshire? Um, there's been nothing that's been formally put forward. So um, the information that's out there has come from several different sources. Uh, apparently the owner of the property has uh, gone to certain community groups and met and described in broad concepts some ideas that uh, he um, that they would like to see done at Hampshire. Um, it's my understanding that there have been some meetings with some elected officials, um, also bringing them up to speed on some preliminary conceptual ideas. And from what we understand, and again, there's been no formal submission, what we understand, they would like to build a multi-story uh, apartment building on the property containing approximately 100 to 125 units of condominium residences. Now, just, just to clarify, I mean, I, as an elected official, as a past elected official, you often have meetings with different people of different ideas. So there's, there's nothing out of the ordinary with having a meeting. And, you know, so we just want to, we want to put that out there to begin with. You know, you could have meetings, everybody could have meetings. Of course. Meeting. But the difficulty and what, what the developer, I assume, would be asking for would be a zoning change to allow this to happen. Because yeah. right now, from what I understand, the parcel that he's talking about developing is where the country club house is, right? The, uh, the clubhouse. The, the clubhouse. Uh, you see, I'm, I'm not familiar. I've never been a member, so I'm not familiar with the terminology. But uh, that land there, uh, I think it's seven acres that's zoned Marine Recreation District. So that's not zoned for residential development. So I assume they would have to ask for a zoning change. Well, you, you're suggesting they would have to ask for a zoning change. I don't know if they would have to ask for a zoning change. It's our understanding that what the owner of the property would like to do would be to petition the Board of Trustees and request a zoning change for some or all of the property. They don't have to do that. They would like to do that. The owner of the property has other options, but this is apparently a uh, process and a direction that they would uh, seemingly choose to go. Okay, let's talk about the other options in a moment. Just you bring up a good point. If he request, he, he has he, everybody has on any piece of property the ability to request a zoning change of the board of trustees. Now I know from my time on the board of trustees, the board of trustees doesn't have to entertain that request. Well, they, that, they 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 can decide not to hear the request and not to begin the process. That's that's a uh, actually that's a very very critical differentiation between a normal submission of an application to develop a piece of land. The normal process would be an application for a site plan development proposal. Mm -hmm. And that would be submitted and go through a fairly planning rigorous board. process through the planning board and perhaps other uh, boards and commissions in the village. But it's basically a planning board process. and. Um, once an application to the planning board is submitted, there's an obligation by the planning board to hear it. 
someone does the work, they prepare an application, the planning board is required yeah. to see the process. You can't let it languish. You, you can't you, let it languish yeah. because you would get into some... Uh, yeah, I think there's a statutory time that, that you have that's to... That's right. To, you, uh, you have an obligation as a planning board to hear it. A petition for a rezoning is not submitted to the planning board. It is submitted to the legislature in the village of Amaranek, that being the board of trustees. As such, it's a political action, not a planning action. And what happens is the property owner, and anyone has a right to do this, but the property owner prepares a petition and asks the elected body, the board of trustees, to please rezone the parcel from what it currently is to something else. There is no obligation under any law that the Board of Trustees has to either accept it or proceed with it or refer it or do anything with it. In fact, they can take the application and say, thank you very much, but no thank you. And that's the end of it. So could, from my experience, once you decide to accept the application, and because you know, it's easy to make the argument, well, it, it, it makes sense just to look at it. But once you decide to accept the application and begin the process of looking at it, 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 it really uh, starts uh, a, a, a steamroll effect. You know, you, you get uh, environmental impact statements, you get draft environmental impact statements, and you, know, it, it, you, you really kind of get caught up in, you know, you get caught up in a negotiation, or maybe instead of 100 apartments, it should be 80 apartments. So you've already changed the argument. You know, you've, you've changed the nature of the argument to should this be developed and should the law change it all to what the scope of development should be. And what, what the village of America just went through this long process with a lot of citizen input to uh, update the master plan. And the master plan is, you know, kind of the zoning Bible. And this wasn't a consideration or anywhere mentioned in that master plan, was it? Well, as a matter of fact, it's very interesting. You're absolutely correct about uh, the process. Uh, sometimes the, the, the elected body, the Board of Trustees, if they decide to accept a petition for rezoning, they don't do anything with it. They would immediately refer it to another agency, to another board, in this case, the planning board. And you're absolutely correct. That would tick off a very involved, very comprehensive, very lengthy, very expensive process going on for months and months and months, sometimes years, to look at what is being proposed. Um, so, I, just let me interrupt. So, I, just to elaborate on that point, the board really has to make a decision. You know, they can't, it, it, they, they, they shouldn't get swayed by the argument of, well, let's look at all the things before we make the decision. The decision has to be, do you think that this residential development is good for the village before you, you ask the developer to go through its expense, time, and, you know, energy. And, and it's also energy that would be, you know, taken away from the planning board's other jobs, energy that would be taken away from the village of Mariner trustees' other commitments. There's no, there's no question it's a, about it's, it. It's a commitment of resources. It is a commitment of resources. It is a commitment of time, staff time. It is a commitment, I mean, I, I think it would be folly, really, for any municipality, any elected body, to say, well, you know, we really don't think this is in the best interest of the village, but you know what, let's take a look at it. Why would you do that? Why would you lead someone down the path uh, if, if you have a sense that you're not really interested in it. The Board of Trustees has the right to say, we're not interested in it. You know, it, it's, it's your idea, Mr. Property Owner. It's not our idea. But you raise an interesting point. The village just finished a multi-year, very, very intense process with... Something that started when I was on the board and continued on... Through you know, successive... Probably a decade, it seemed. I, I yeah. would think so. The original master plan adopted in this village is 1986. This is the first significant, substantial revisit and upgrading. And what's interesting is after all the time and all of the participation by the community and all of the efforts by all sorts of folks and professionals, the notion of Hampshire, Hampshire Country Club in the report says it ought to be rezoned from 
its current R20 residential designation to R30, or it ought to be rezoned to be maintained open space, recreational open space. There's nowhere in the comprehensive plan that suggests there ought to be a portion of that land dedicated for multi-unit uh, residential Mr. apartment building. And just, just let me clarify for some of the nomenclature for the folks at home, R20 means that it's a 20,000 square foot lot. More importantly, and it's R30 is a 30,000 square foot lot. R20 is single family, single family home on single a 20,000 20, square, 20, square foot, which is you know o almost half an acre. That's correct. And R30 would be a little more, less than three quarters of an acre. That's correct. Now, in the village of Mamaroneck, there is no R20 is currently the largest. That's the largest. Yes. There is a portion of Hampshire, approximately uh, seven acres, that lies within the town of Mamaroneck. Right. Several years ago, that was rezoned to R30 in the town. Right. And the balance of the parcel lying within the village of Mamaroneck is predominantly R20, single family homes, or a small portion, MR, marine recreation. Uh, now that we're talking about the R20, I think it, it's important to point out in the discussion about Hampshire that the person who owns, and you know, if, if he wishes to develop, has an as of right ability to build homes in the R20 section that's zoned there for, for those lots that are buildable lots. Uh, uh, absolutely. Right, and, and, and th that is not you know, a debatable project. That, you know, if he wants to build homes, he's allowed to build homes. And you know, he bought the property knowing that he could build those homes. Right, and he bought the property knowing that the country club, the clubhouse, as you call it, was zoned marine recreation. And you know, obviously, he's a savvy man, and he's got you know, you know, uh, smart advisors. So he knew what this was going in. And I don't fault you know him. He, you know, he wants to make money, and that's fine. That, that that's we we all want to make money, and we all want to you know see what we can do and maximize our investment. Everybody wants to do that. But you know, but the the government of the village of America and the people of the village of America. Uh, the government who's representing the people has to look at what's best for the village. Is a, a large apartment building uh, in the middle of a residential area, is that something that we want to allow? And if we allow that in, in the marine recreation zone, how does that affect other properties in the marine recreation zone? Well, the marine which, would be, which would be the other country clubs. The, the marine recreation zone encompasses pretty much most of the uh, waterfront properties, whether uh, it's the... Um, I think there were four country clubs or uh, there's Orienta, clubs. there's uh, Beach Point, Beach Orienta, Mamaroneck Beach, Beach and, and Yacht, Yacht and yeah. Hampshire. And Hampshire. Uh, they're all just a portion of Hampshire, just a portion that, where the that, clubhouse is and I think the parking lot area and stuff like that. That's correct. Um, and one of the uh, unique aspects of the Marine Recreation Zone is it prohibits residential development. It's prohibited. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me one of the rationales that the owner of Hampshire has for thinking about requesting a rezoning is because both under R20 single family homes or marine recreation, no residential development, they are precluded from developing a multi-unit apartment building. So it seems logical they would say, well, let's change the zoning. Okay, why not, as you suggested, why not come in and say, I want to develop the land I own. Why not develop it with homes in the R20 district? They have a right to present a site plan to do that. There's also, in, I believe in the village, there is provision for cluster housing, which are like townhouses mm -hmm. in which you um, preserve some open space, but you can cluster the houses at the same density. With, with, with the understanding that the open space will be forever preserved. That's correct.